Good morning, and welcome to our service of praise and thanksgiving and Holy Communion. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Come, Holy Spirit, and renew your people. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we are taught by your word that all our doings without love are worth nothing. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtue. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's letters to the Ephesians, chapter 6, verses 10 to 20. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and have done everything to stand firm. Stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. Well, of all of these, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly, as I must speak. The word of the Lord. Amen. We will say Psalm 34, verses 15 to 22, responsively by verse. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous 
and his ears are open to their cry. The righteous cry, and the Lord hears them and delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the broken hearted, and will save those whose spirit are crushed. Many are the troubles of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver him out of them all. He will save all his bones, not one of them shall be broken. Evil shall slay the wicked and those who hate the righteous will be punished. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants, and none will be punished who trust in him. Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching at the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, this teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe, and who was that one that would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you. 
I speak to you in the name of the Holy One, who is and was and will be forever. Amen. It's all a matter of perspective. You see, we know who Jesus was and is and will always be. So we hear his voice as the voice of authority and we pay attention. But if you think back to the beginning of this sixth chapter of John, when the crowd came to see Jesus and they were eager to ask him questions and find out what he was all about, those people saw only a man, an ordinary man, who they thought might be the Messiah. And when Jesus answered them, they were very much offended by what he said, or rather, what they heard him say. I'm not going to do what you want. I was sent by God, and I am going to do what God wants. You have it all wrong. You have to change. You have to become more like me. Well, you don't have to preach for very long to know that that's not a good beginning to a sermon. <laughs> so there were a lot of people who left at the beginning. Well, who does he think he is? They thought to themselves, I'm out of here. So many of them simply left. But some stayed. Some stayed and they heard Jesus repeating the same thing over and over and over again. I am the bread of life. And they stayed and they listened, but they didn't really get it. And when Jesus talked about him being the bread of life, which was given for them, they couldn't really understand whether he was talking in literal terms or whether he was talking metaphorically. But by this time, they too have gone and only a few are left. So we have to ask ourselves, what is going on here? Why does Jesus keep saying, I am the bread of life? What does he even mean by that? And why do people think that this message is so difficult? Well, what it boils down to is that Jesus is telling us who he is. And in his message that he is the bread of life, and when he says, whoever eats me will live because of me, he is talking about spiritual food. And he is talking about all of us being transformed into who he is. The problem from our perspective is that Jesus is the incarnate Son of God. How can we even begin to think 
that we could become what he is. The answer lies in the meaning and the mystery of the incarnation itself. We say that Jesus is both fully human and fully divine. So in Jesus, this huge gap between God and ourselves has been closed. One of the names that is given to Jesus is the human face of God, and that he is. But he is also, and we need to pay attention to this, he is also the godly face of humanity. In the identity of Jesus, we are reminded that in the beginning, God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. In the identity of Jesus, we are reminded that we attain our fullest humanity only as, by the grace of God, we aspire to model ourselves in the image of God's divine nature. We know, of course, that we will never actually get there, but we are called to try. We must learn, as Jesus did, to see the world with the eyes of God, to understand the world with the wisdom of God, and love the world with the heart of God. It is then, and only then, that we are able to act in accordance with the will of God, and so fulfill God's purpose for our lives. And the way that we accomplish all of this is that we follow Jesus along his path. We learn from him and we model ourselves in his image. We feed on him the bread of life and so transform ourselves that uh, we too are able to be in this world the chosen people. Of God. What would that look like? Imagine for a moment that we could truly see this beautiful, fragile earth through the loving eyes of its creator. A planet so wonderfully made, so intricately balanced that each and every plant and animal has a place to thrive. A planet where every stream and river runs crystal clear. A planet of blue skies. If we could imagine, if we could really, truly imagine, we would do more, wouldn't we? We would do more to try and reverse the damage that has already been done. And if we really, truly could see from God's perspective the tragedy of war and famine and human suffering, we would do more, wouldn't we? Wouldn't we? Yes, to look at the world from God's perspective is hard. We want to close our eyes and run away. But Jesus is the bread of life. As we incorporate him into our very souls, he not only challenges us, but he gives us bread for the journey. He nourishes us, strengthens us, give us gives us everything we need to accomplish God's purpose. 
as we walk with Jesus, as we follow his example, as we are fed by him, we do find that our lives are transformed. We are filled with a new sense of purpose, new joy, and a profound sense of thanksgiving for the privilege of serving God in whatever small way that we are able to do. God grant to each and every one of us that as we walk in this world, as we feed on the bread of life and allow ourselves to be transformed into this wonderful vision that Jesus gives us, God grant that others will see in us a very small glimpse of God's face of humanity. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, let us pray. Giving thanks for God's goodness, let us pray for the church and for the world, saying, Lord, and responding, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Creator of all, we remember with gratitude your good gifts to us in creation, for the earth, its beauty and resources. Inspire us to use your gifts with greater responsibility and care for the protection of the planet and the benefit of all life. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord of peace, we pray for those who are suffering from the violent effects of political and military turmoil in the troubled places of the world. Remembering especially today the people of Afghanistan, Guide those who hold authority and lead us and all people in the way of justice and peace. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the church throughout the world, thanking you for all who serve Christ and his kingdom. By your spirit, strengthen them for their work and witness in the world. In our world cycle of prayer today, we give thanks for the bishops, clergy, and people of the Anglican Church of South America. In our diocese, we pray for Bishop Rosilla Shaw, and in the Oshawa Deanery, for the parish of St. Martin Curtis. For Archbishop Linda, our primate, Archbishop Anne, our metropolitan, Bishop Andrew, our diocesan bishop, Bishop Priscilla and Bishop Kevin, our area bishops. Lord, hear our prayer. We give thanks for this parish of St. Thomas. We pray for the Reverend Benjamin Gillard, our priest, as he prepares to begin his ministry with us in September. For the faithful ministry of Reverend Sharon during these summer months, for Deacon Laurie and for Bishop Blackwell, our honorary assistant, and for these members of our parish family, Donna Carl, Diana, Allen, and Emerson Carroll, and Jane Carson. Grant that we may serve Christ in one another, in our neighborhoods and our community. Lord, hear our prayer for those in need of healing in Christ's peace. Ben Brown, Diane Libby, Brand Lattler, Georgina Knapp, Peggy Howden, Jane Carson, Karen King, Donna Carl, Anne Randall, Sharon McKinnon, Ken Loach, Sharon Robinson, Ron Spencer, Maureen West, Anne Seeley, Anna Hart, Anne Longman, Michael Murray, Bonnie Bedford-Jones, Helen Butterworth, 
Mark Blackwell, Jenny, Joanne, Michelle, Felix, and Thomas. For all on our parish prayer list and for the ones we now name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For relief from the COVID virus, that God will guide researchers to a better understanding of the virus so the human family may be protected and the sick restored to wholeness. Lord, hear our prayer. God of compassion, Give courage and hope to those who are in need or distress. We pray for the victims of natural disasters, remembering especially the people of Haiti in the wake of the devastating earthquake, and for all who are helping to bring aid and relief. For the sick, the hungry, those who live under the threat of violence, and for all refugees and displaced persons, Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died in the faith of Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone, give comfort to those who mourn and bring them peace in their time of loss. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we praise you for your unfailing grace. Make us now your faithful people and strengthen us to serve you with joy. We offer our prayers this day in the name of our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Oh, yeah. 
Let us pray. God of glory, receive all we offer this day as a symbol of our love, and increase in us that true and perfect gift. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. He is your living Word, through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you. And so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross, that he might shatter the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup saying, This is my blood, which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we offer you this bread 
and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your Holy Church. Gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honor are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. These are the gifts of God for us, the holy and beloved people of God. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, Grant us peace.
I invite you in the silence of your own hearts to join me in prayer to make your own act of spiritual communion with Christ. Let us pray. I worship and adore you, Lord Jesus Christ, present in the Holy Sacrament and in your people who are gathered in spirit. In this moment, I join with them to receive you in my heart and in our community. May you, enthroned on the altar, be now enthroned in my heart. May you, present in bread and wine, feed and renew my soul. May you, who give yourself to us again, fill us with grace and heavenly blessing. Even as I am fed, may my hunger for you and for your reign of justice and peace increase, that I may, with your spirit, work for that day when your reign shall come on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. And for the children, Lord Jesus, thank you that you are always with me. I pray that you would remind me to welcome you to share every day with me. Thank you for loving me. I want to say that I love you too. Amen. Loving God, increase in us the healing power of your love. Guide and direct us that we may please you in all things for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Amen.
Thank you.